What is up guys, welcome to Barden. My name is Heinrich and today we're gonna to take a look at adding stats to our game. More specifically, we're just gonna look at how to add health to our character and enemies. Just so you know, there is a companion article to this part of the series and there should be for all other parts moving forward. So if you prefer reading the tutorial, you can check it out on bardenstudios.com. So in the previous episode, we started focusing on how we're going to damage and knock back our enemies in the game. To do this, we created two interfaces, I damageable and I knockbackable, which determines how we interact with objects that can be damaged and knocked around. Today, we're gonna to focus on adding our stat score component. But before we do that, we have to do another bug fix. So what did I forget to do last time? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at our combat core component. So in here, our combat core component is responsible for checking the knockback of the entity. So over here, we have this check knockback function that when our knockback is active, will stop the knockback from being active once the character has landed back on the ground, but we also wanted to stop it once a certain amount of time has passed. That is why we created this knockback start time variable, but as you can see, we never used it. So let's go ahead and fix that. So we need to start by defining a variable that holds how long the knockback should be active for. So what is the maximum amount of time that the character can be knocked back? So let's go ahead and just create at the top over here a serialized field, and it will be a private float, and we'll just call it max knockback time. And by default, I'm just gonna set it equal to 0 0.3, actually 0 0.2 F like that. We can then come back down to our check knockback function. And in the if statement here, we wanna check if the character or entity is grounded. So that's these two parts of the if statement over here or whether that amount of time has passed. To do that, let's go ahead and wrap all of this in a bracket or a pair of brackets. And then let's add another one over here. And then we'll say or, and add that last bracket just to make everything make sense. Move back one space. And in here we'll say time dot time is greater than or equal to our knockback start time plus our max knockback time, like that. So now our is knockback active must be true and either one of these two. So either these two must both be true or this one must be true. If all of these conditions are met, our knockback will stop. And that's it, and that's all we forgot to do last time. So let's go ahead and move on. Now, before we create our stats core component, I want to make a little change to our core and core component scripts. So our core gives our entities access to some other useful and reusable components. Some of these components, like our movement and combat scripts, make use of logic update. So over here, if we open up our combat script, you can see we have logic update that calls our check knockback function and our movement core component uses the logic update to set the current velocity. Now, whenever we create a new core component that has to make use of the logic update, we need to remember to add this logic update function and then come to our core over here and remember to call that specific logic update in the core's logic update function. So instead of doing this, let's go ahead and make the logic update part of our core component using another interface and make it so that our core components add themselves to a update list on our core which will then be looped through every logic update from the core and each of the logic update functions will get called. That way, whenever we create a new core component, we don't have to remember to do all of this. We can just go ahead and implement the logic. So let's head back to Unity and let's navigate to our scripts interfaces folder and let's go ahead and create a new C sharp script and I'm just gonna call it I logic update. Let's go ahead and open this file up. And then in here, we can get rid of all this pre-generated code. And also we do not need to inherit from mono behavior. And then we'll change class to interface. Now this interface is simply going to be responsible for a void logic update function like that. So the function does not return anything and it does not take in any parameters. Let's come back to our core. And in here at the top with our variables, 
let's go ahead and declare a private list. And we'll give this list a type of i logic update. And we'll just call it components. And we'll set this equal to a new list of type logic update. Just like that. With this list in hand, we can then come down to our logic update function and remove these two logic update calls and replace it with a for each loop. Remember, you can hit tab twice to autocomplete that code snippet. And in here, we'll change var to i logic update and item will become component. And we are going to look in the components collection. Now, inside this for each loop, all we say is component dot logic update like that. So because we know that this list stores i logic update uh, objects, we guarantee that these objects will have logic update functions. After adding that to the logic update function, we can go ahead and declare a new function that is going to be public void, and we'll just call it add component. Now this function is going to take in a single parameter, and it's going to be of type i logic update, and we'll just call it component. Inside this function, we'll then first check to see if this component is already in the list or not. And if it's not, we'll add the component to the list. So we'll say if not components dot contains and to contains we'll pass our component. So if this is false, meaning our components list does not contain this component, then components dot add component. We can then go ahead and navigate to our core component file. And in here, all we need to do is add i logic update to our class declaration to declare that we are implementing our i logic update. And then after our awake function, we can go ahead and say public virtual void logic update. Like that. We can then also come back to our awake function. And after we've checked that we've successfully found the core, we can go ahead and say core dot add component. And to that, we'll just pass this. And now to make this work with our logic updates that we have so far, we simply need to come to our movement script and change our public void logic update to public override void logic update like that. And the same for our combat core component. So public override void logic update. So let's go ahead and head back to Unity and let's just make sure everything is still working. Perfect. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so let's talk about this stats core component. The stats core component is going to be responsible for keeping track of and interacting with anything that makes use of various stats, such as health, poise, you know, mana, stamina, things like that. Today, we're just going to focus on the health aspect of it. But that's what the stats core component is for. So let's go ahead and navigate to our core components folder over here. And let's go ahead and right click and say create new C sharp script. And we'll just call it stats like that. Let's go ahead and open that up in Visual Studio. And we can start by getting rid of all the pre generated code and simply replacing mono behavior with core component. Inside the class, we can then begin by creating variables for our health. So we can start with a serialized field for our maximum health. That's what we're going to set in the inspector. So private float max health. And then let's also create a private float current health variable. So when the game starts, we want to set our current health to our maximum health. So we'll do this in the awake function. So let's say protected override, because our core component script already implements our awake function as a virtual function. So protected override await, like that. Remember to call base.await 
and then we can say current health equals max health. Next, we want to go ahead and create two functions, one for decreasing our health and one for increasing our health. So let's just go ahead and declare a public void decrease health function. And this will take in a float called amount. Inside this function, we'll start by saying current health minus equals amount. So after we've subtracted this amount, we want to go ahead and check to see if our health is less than or equal to zero. So if current health is less than or equal to zero, then we know that our entity has died. But currently, we're not going to do anything with that. That'll come in a couple of episodes. We just want to get this part ready. But we also want to make sure that if our health is less than zero, that it gets reset back to zero as we cannot have a negative health. So we'll just say current health equals zero. And then for now, let's just do a debug.log and say health is zero. So now whenever our entity gets damaged, we can call this decrease health function and it'll take care of decreasing our health and then doing something once the health has reached zero. Let's also go ahead and create a public void increase health. This function will also take in a float amount. And all this function has to do is add this amount to our current health. So we'll say current health equals mathf dot clamp because we want to clamp our health to not go above our maximum health and to this function we first pass in the value that we want to clamp so current health plus our amount then we pass in zero as our minimum and max health as our maximum health now we're not actually going to be making use of this function anytime soon, but this will come in handy later when we start adding things like potions and that sort of fun stuff. So back in Unity, let's go ahead and click on our player and come to the core, right click and say create empty. And this new game object we'll just call stats. We can then come to add component and add the stats script. Let's go ahead and set our max health to 100 to begin with. Perfect. So let's also add stats to our enemy one and enemy two. We can just go ahead and right click on the stats game object, click copy, and then come to our enemy one, right click on the core and hit paste. Now, as you can see, it actually added stats uh, as a sibling to core and not a child. So let's just go ahead and drag that into the core. And as you can see, it's now underneath combat over here. But note that our stats transform has changed and has remained on our player. So where we copied the object from. So just click on the three dots over here and hit reset. We can then also come to our enemy two and do the same thing. I wonder if I paste it on movement like that. Perfect. Okay. So as you can see, stats is now a sibling of the other core components. But again, we need to come and reset our transform. So now all three entities should have the stats core component. But now before our stats will actually do anything, we need to come back to our core script over here and give it a reference to our stats. So underneath our combat, let's go ahead and declare a new private stats and we'll just call it stats like that. And then let's create the public getter and setter for it. So public stats stats with a capital S this case. And then in here, we just say get with an arrow and then our generic not implemented error of type stats dot try get stats transform dot parent dot name like that. Now, if you remember correctly, this simply tries to get our stats core component. And then if it does not, it'll give us an error. So I'm already getting unhappy with how this is being handled. And we're going to improve on this in the next part with a way more generic system that I think you'll like. 
that article is actually already out because I'm a little bit ahead with those. So you can go check out part 35 early if you want. But for now, I'm just sticking to how we do it in this article. So after this, we can then say private set. And that is going to call stats equals value. Like that. So now our core has a reference to our stats core component. So now our core has a place to store the stats core component. Let's go and come down to awake and just say stats equals get component in children of type stats. Like that, and that should set the reference. Okay, so now that we can access stats through our core component, we can come to our combat core component and actually damage the entity. So in our damage function, where we are currently only debugging something, let's go ahead and add core.stats.decrease health and pass along the amount. And that's it for hooking up our health stat, at least, to our damage function or to our combat system. Let's go ahead and come back to Unity and just test it out. So eventually we should see our character's health reach zero. Let's just go ahead and unmaximize this. And let's take a look at our player stats core component. And let's set our editor to debug mode. You can see that our current health is 40 and 30, 20, 10, zero. And there you see health is zero, <laughs> as you would expect. So that is how we're handling uh, our stats core component. What's going to happen is over here, whenever our health does reach zero, we're going to fire up off an event and you can subscribe to that event to handle whatever you want to do with your character when it dies, whether it's a game over, whether there's some sort of respawn logic that needs to happen. You're going to handle that over here, either with a function call or like I said, with an event. And uh, yeah, that'll be for a future part but it should be coming soon. Okay, so that's going to do it for this episode. And in the next episode, we're gonna do some reworking of how our core handles references to core components and figure out how we can make it so that all the entities do not require the same core components and make that a little bit more dynamic and reusable. And so before I go, I would just like to say thank you to all of my patrons. Um, you guys have supported me for so long, even though I haven't been posting content for like the last five months. So just again, thank you so much for all of that. And a huge special thank you to Borgia MK Ultra, Alex Dev, Pyro Says, Anthony, Binary Chef, Cleon Vassner, Jeremiah Miranda, Cody Lee, Kareem Butler, SM, Major Sins, and Rayua. Thank you guys so much. You guys are absolute bad lads. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.